Welcome to The Practical Filmmaker. David George here with another episode of Gear and Gadgets. Today I'm looking at the Cream Source Vortex 8 and we are going to compare it to the trusty old SkyPanel S60. So let's dive in. Okay, you're probably familiar with the SkyPanel S60. It's the one that really changed it all for us about 10 years ago. Uh, it brought full uh, RGB color and soft light and bright output and uh, AC power plus even battery power options and so on to the world of lighting. And it really did shake things up. Here it is quite a few late years later and the sky panel is still a workhorse. We still see them on set all the time. But I keep hearing more and more about this Vortex 8 and the shop that we work with a lot of times finally got a pair of these in and uh, got to use them on a on a shoot recently. They're both roughly two feet by one feet in or one foot in size but you see right away the sky panel ha comes with the diffuser standard the Vortex 8 comes with the LEDs more directionally and more uh, more exposed basically. That increases the light output and creates a more hard light source from this um, both of them will accept modifiers that slide in in front of the LED panel and I believe you can, yes, you can pull this front diffuser as well to expose the LEDs. Some differences right away. The cream source has an integrated ballast. So we've got a power cord and that's, that's it. With the sky panel, we've got a low voltage power cord that comes down to a ballast. Yes, they've included some ways to attach ballast to the fixture. Now, the guy who owns the shop here, Michael, he prefers this separated uh, ballast and head design because if you're putting a light on a menace arm or a tall stand, it minimizes how much weight is up there. I have to say, I'm, I'm sort of team put the ballast in the fixture just because it's so much faster to set up a light that uh, includes everything all in one so you don't have head cables to get damaged and lost and it's just less time to set up. I will say that the cream source unit is heavier but it's the same weight as the sky panel and the ballast together within I mean less than a pound difference they're virtually the same weight once you include the the components that are necessary to make the whole thing work. Um, another interesting difference with the sky panel S60 the yoke here frequently we'll put a you know a big soft box or something on the sky panel well when it tilts down the soft box hits this yoke so a workaround that a lot of people use is they have a little 45 degree offset that goes in the junior receiver that tilts the whole fixture forward to uh, to allow it for easier use with a soft box with the cream source they've built that in to the design of the yoke so even with a soft box it can tilt down quite a bit before the softbox risks interfering with the yoke. Okay, another really big difference is that this has the lumen radio built right into it, which I do a lot of wireless lighting control. And so for me, that's, that's really big. So we can go into DMX settings and we can link our, see it's got the CRMX and everything all built in. Of course, it still has traditional DMX in if you want to do hardwire, but man, just having that lumen radio built in now, working with a sky panel is not that difficult, but you have to have a lumen radio that plugs in and you can take power from the USB port down here to power your lumen radio. So it's not a huge deal. Um, and this does have the ethernet in if you're using a DMX over ethernet. So that's all fine, but it's just, it's nice. It's one less thing to think about when the radio is built right into the light. So you can go right from your rat pack or whatever else to the fixture itself. Yeah, let's turn these on. So these are LED panels. Uh, so, you know, this came up with, uh, with blue. Looks like it's in in filter mode right now so it's giving you colors based on gels but we can change that anyway you guys are probably familiar with sky panels and the world of leds i don't think that's really the newsmaker right here it's really um the difference between these two panels the, the really the probably the biggest thing here is you can get more output from this fixture and it makes it a little more versatile and then there are a handful of other 
refinements that has caused the Vortex 8 to really gain some traction. Let's see if we can uh, turn this thing on. Oh, there we go. So that's 3100 Kelvin. You can see it's a fairly directional beam because it, you know, it's almost as directional as that Nanlux Fresnel, I would say. So, you know, you get the size of the source makes it sort of soft, but then the directionality of the source, it's a little bit like a soft box with a, an LCD or a, a, you know, an egg crate or something. Comparing prices between the Sky Panel and the Vortex 8, the Vortex 8 is going to set you back around $5,500, and the Sky Panel S60 is going to be uh, 6800 and change probably. You know, it's interesting. You may notice a theme that I keep comparing things to Airy products, and Airy just keeps ending up at the top of the mountain. Even if their products aren't technically in some ways as good as other products, they still seem to be, you know, king of the mountain. And I think that that comes down to them being less focused on having every bell and whistle and more focused on just predictable reliability. So for whatever reason, they continue to be able to charge a premium for their products, you know, like the Sky Panel, even though they don't do as much stuff as their competitors. So I guess that's the way it works in a lot of industries, but it's a kind of interesting thing. Sky Panels are great fixtures and they continue to be a good old reliable unit that we all know and love. The Vortex 8 I like for the integrated ballast, the Lumen radio control and that little bit more of output and directionality that you get from the bare LEDs versus the diffused default mode.